Okay. Alright. Hello, my name is Marcel Paris Agafonov, and today I will be doing our DPP presentation 1418. Now, before I dive into what we've been up to recently, I'd like to take a moment to review what we've done in the past. As far as our mission statement goes, the mission of Team 18 has stayed the exact same. We'd like to be a premier provider for facial shade coverage and eye strain protection in the future for all college users. We're intending to completely just drive into the college user base. Looking at our customers, we want to provide a product that's stylish, adjustable, long-lasting, comfortable, and durable. We need to work closely with our customers as they're the key to our success and what we're driving forward to make a successful product. Looking at our use cases, we're still maintaining that we want to have a hat that can cover the front of the face to protect somebody from the sun, turn around to protect the neck from the sun, as well as have some sort of a device to drop down sunglasses. Moving on from these specifications, we then started looking at how could we actually make a product that could satisfy these specifications. To do this, we created a lot of different, different functions, including sunglasses positioning, materials, removability, mechanism mount the hat, mechanism mount the sunglasses, and the sunglasses receiver, all of which you can see are different designs over here. Once we had all those, we made a concept generation table, and we all, all the team members made separate designs that we then analyzed and drew up to review. All these designs seem fairly functional, and in the end, we ended up with going with design one, as you can see over here. This design seemed cheap, practical, and high function. It didn't seem like it would be too expensive to make as it was made out of simple components, and it seemed like it would be able to get the job done. When we compared it to our other devices, we noticed that it had a much higher score than them. It seemed much lighter in weight, as well as much better at doing some of the functions and specifying the criteria that our customers desired. It's important to note that our customers were way more interested in things relying on length, as this is what interacted with them daily. The circumference of the hat, the distance from sunglasses to the face, these kinds of things are what they were most interested in. And they were less interested in safety elements, as it's not in the frontmost of their mind when it comes to articles of clothing. However, as a company, we are still interested in making sure that our products are safe, and so far, this product seems completely safe. Now, before I go further into our prototypes, I'd like to take a moment to dive into the intellectual property that surrounds this problem. Now, when we looked at this problem, there were actually a significant amount of patents um, that covered the sunglasses and hat combination problem. I've shown four of them over here. Now, even though we looked at a lot of different ones, we didn't see any ones that were immediately appearing to infringe upon the sun hat itself, at least our current design. However, it was interesting to note that when we did our competitive benchmark on the TCAP, two patents actually matched the TCAP's design, so we're going to make sure that we stay away from this front slip hat right here. You can see the hat will go down and passes through the slip and then come back up. Now, these are all very interesting designs, and they have a lot of different um, intricacies in them. For example, this one over here has a retention leash such that the leash can be attached to the back of the hat, and if the hat blows away, the hat still stays connected to the user's neck. Additionally, we saw a design with a little um, recess in the bill area. Now this helps to keep the sunglasses really well hidden to make it look just like a hat. Additionally, we saw a ball and socket joints in this design, as well as horizontal clips on the side of the bill, something that is extremely unique and provides really accurate positioning of the sunglasses. These are all extremely interesting ideas, and it's certainly something that we could look into in the future as we move forward with our product and similar second revisions. Now, since we defined all the different parts in our hat, we'd like to take a moment to look at what an assembly analysis of the hat may look like. It's important that assembly right now for the sun hat has five different steps. Orienting the hat clip, attaching the sunglasses clip to the hat clip, pushing the metal rod into the friction through the holes, attaching the assembly to the sunglasses, and attaching the assembly to the hat. Now these five steps all require the manipulation of bulky geometry, which ended up having them all five ending with extremely high times when analyzed on the chart. The most time expensive step was pushing the pin into the friction pit hole. This averaged at about 7.13 seconds total. In total, as the whole process is done, it takes 20.61 seconds to build the whole sun hat. Using this approximation, we can estimate that to assemble one sun hat with no um, learning curve parameters, 
it'll take nine cents per sum pattern. Now, if we look at analyzing learning curve parameters, to do this, we asked one of our team members to build a sum hat four times. On the fourth time, we took this time and worked backwards to find a learning curve coefficient of 0 0.921. To be safe, we rounded this up to 0 0.95. And then from there, we used a summation approach to figure out that it would take 13,356 seconds to build all 1,000 sum hats that we have projected to sell. Looking at the assembly cost for this, we realized that it would only take $55.60 to build all of these sun hats. To be a bit safer, since this doesn't include work time and breaks and, and other things that may happen with our workers, we figure it's much safer to budget around $100 for this process. This, something, this is something that seems extremely variable, so we'd be very interested in testing assembly with different assembly workers and actually ensuring that these times are accurate. This is something that we'll have to happen in the future, though, as the sun hat moves into higher demand and production. As you can see, this is what the sun hat looks like when it's fully built. This is the hat print, this is what clips on the sunglasses, this is where the pin goes, and as you can see, it slides onto the hat over there. We have some dimension drawings in here from our NX catting process, as well as the building materials down here. Now, when it came to the building materials, the main product, products that we had to worry about were the hat clamp and the clamp clip for the sunglasses. These two would have to be outsourced, and we plan on using additive manufacturing for them. When we got a quote from Proto Labs, we realized that Proto Labs gave us a very high price that did not seem accurate at all. Injection molding would have been nice, however, it required us to change our CAD part into a higher tolerance, which would make the product overall not work at all. Now, when it comes to getting quotes, it's very important to get a second quote to justify the first quote. So we chose to go to Zometry to make sure that quote from Pro Labs was accurate. We ended up seeing that Zometry offered us a much lower price for a lower quantity than we had asked Proto Labs for. Thus, we decided to go with the Proto Labs price. Ultimately, this would mean that our product would cost a total of $35.47, as you can see down here. Again, the hat clip would be the most expensive item, as well as the sunglasses clip, as shown here. Now, this is a higher price than we intended to initially sell it at. However, it makes sense that going out and getting parts custom made from other companies would raise the price that we had initially thought. Thus, we're going to have to sell it for $50 instead of our originally lower projected number. This will mean that we can still sell it a thousand hats at $50 and make our product goals for that economics. Now we can also look at the failure modes for our product. We noticed three main failure modes. The snapping of the hat clamp under stress, the pivot bar becoming too loose to use, and the hat ripping the visor of the hat. Now when it comes to the first failure mode, in the future, we'd like to bolster it up such that we don't have to worry about it snapping under stress anymore. This is an extremely important problem when it comes to additive manufacturing and there's pockets inside of the material itself. So making it thicker would reduce this issue. We'd also like to look at different materials for the pivot bar, as this is something that's undergoing cyclical different loads. So it will fatigue and it will likely deform um, out of the plastic region and will not go back. So we're either gonna have to offer multiple pivot bars or look for different materials that work better for the pivot bar. Additionally, for the hat, we'd like to add a compressive material to the hat clip, clip such that we don't have to worry about it ripping the bill of the hat anymore or we'd like to change the design such that it's a slightly smoother slope down to the hat. Moving forward, we'd like to make that the sun hat more applicable to different kinds of hats. We'd like to change which hats it can go onto, as well as move out of just the aviator sunglass range and move on to being able to work with regular prescription glasses, as well as other kinds of sunglasses. Thank you, I hope you've enjoyed this DP3 presentation. Here are our work cited for the different patents that we use, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.